No two people are alike. This is a phrase known across the globe. Despite this international recognition, it still lives in the shadows of the stereotypes that overpower it. We live in a world ruled by schedules, deadlines, and a ticking clock. Not many people take the time to slow down, enjoy the surroundings, and talk to the people sitting next to them. They are too focused on Instagramming their breakfast, staying up with the latest trends, and getting to their next appointment on time. As a consequence, we have found ways to speed along these social interactions that we find too time consuming. The result, we overlook the individual. Our society is dictated by time constraints and applications that help us to organize our daily lives. Our phones are constantly reminding us that we have to be at work in 15 minutes, so we better leave now. That we are not drinking enough water. We even have apps that tell us when we are not standing enough. We use these tools every day as a way to be more efficient, but in doing so, we forget to remember how unique each day is. We forget to take into account how special each person is. We overlook the importance of the individual. I am Kate Reagan, and I am here today to bring awareness to just how much of an impact this idea of individualization can have in the health field. So how do we do that? The answer, pharmacogenomics, which is just a big fancy word with too many syllables, defined as the use of someone's unique and specific genetic makeup and guiding and selecting the use of medications. It is a non-invasive test that tells your doctors what mutations you have in your DNA markers and your drug metabolism pathways, which can help rule in and out medications. It can clue your doctor into what dose of a drug to give. It can even help avoid side effects of medications. The goal is to highlight the fact no two people are the same and to use those differences to personalize a treatment plan that is the best option for you and you alone. It is time we show the world just how big of an impact each person's unique features, or rather genes, can have for the health of the individual. Later, I'll get into more of the specific applications of pharmacogenomics, but first, I want to tell you why it is necessary. I want to show you that although it has served us well for hundreds of years, the traditional way of selecting medication is no longer our best option. We live in a world where technology makes each person's individual variations readily available. So why don't we use them? Traditional medicine relies on sorting people into stereotypical categories. Race, age, gender, sexuality, hair color, appearances, religion, education, socioeconomic status. I could go on for hours. There is no escape from them. Within the medical field, these markers play a vital role in determining how to treat the disease, but not necessarily the individual. We even have guidelines that make disease classification easier. For example, when I am working on cases in clinic, if I have someone that has high blood pressure, the first thing I check is their race. Because according to these guidelines, this is the factor that will determine what drug we try, not necessarily how the individual re will react. These guidelines are here for a reason, though. They are created and supported by tons of evidence proving their effectiveness, but they do not take into account the traits that make each person unique, their genes. Now, I am not here today to discredit or advocate against the use of these guidelines. Rather, I am here to prove that a person is more than just the algorithms provided by them. I am here to show that someone is not just their race, age, gender, and sexuality. We cannot solely rely on these stereotypical markers if they prevent us from treating the person. And by that, I mean treating the person as their own unique self, and not just as some checkbox on a disease algorithm. Just because two people check off all the same boxes does not mean they will react to the same medication the same way. Each person has their own unique genetic makeup, and this fact alone can have a significant impact on their treatment. This is where pharmacogenomics comes in. Now, many of you may be wondering, why is this short chick on stage talking about individualization? What makes her qualified to go on and on about it? Well, I know how it feels to be grouped into a box just because of how you look. I am an identical twin. Growing up, I was never treated as an individual. I was never referred to by my own name. I was always one half of a matching set. I was always one of the Reagan twins. Since we looked alike, people just assumed that whatever one of us liked or wanted is what the other one liked or wanted, despite the fact that we had different interests. 
I mean, even for birthdays, we all would always get the same gift, but in different colors. Just because we looked like people grouped us into one box, they could easily check off a to-do list. Yes, we were, and we still are very similar to this day, but we are our own unique selves. Growing up this way allowed me to learn the importance of individuality. It made me appreciate the fact that I am my own unique self, and so is everyone else. As medical professionals, we must take into account the person we are treating as well as their diagnosis. We must remember someone is not just a 65-year-old African-American woman with hypertension or just a 26-year-old white male with type 1 diabetes. Because no matter how identical two people seem, they have markers that make them unique. We must consider the importance of these individual variations. This is what pharmacogenomics does. As of December 2017, there are over 250 FDA-approved drugs with pharmacogenomics in their package inserts. All this fancy sentence means is that doctors are able to use someone's genetic makeup in guiding and selecting the use of these medications. We are seeing this used the most in treating infections, cancer, heart disease, and mental illness. So what does this actually look like? Well, if a doctor wants to use pharmacogenomics in someone's treatment regimen, they will run a genetic test. The results of this test are what give the doctor the insight, the knowledge to be able to determine what to do, at, do next. Now there are an endless amount of applications, one being in helping to decide what dose of a drug to give. A pharmacogenomic test can tell a doctor how someone metabolizes a drug. It shows them if this person breaks down the drug at a faster or a slower rate than the average population. Now this is important to understand because how the average population reacts to a drug is what determines these reference doses. For example, in colon cancer, a popular medication can have problems being cleared from the body if someone has a certain mutation. What this means is that this person is not able to get rid of the drug as fast as the average population, which means that reference dose is going to be too high. And that causes the drug to accumulate in the body, which leads to many terrible and unwanted side effects. With pharmacogenomics, a doctor is able to know the person has this mutation and can prescribe a much lower dose adjusted to that person's specific needs, which avoids these terrible and unwanted side effects. Speaking of side effects, who here likes experiencing them? Anyone? I don't think so, neither do I. <laughs> which is why one of my favorite applications of pharmacogenomics is its ability to show us someone's entire genetic sequence. Not only does this clue us into what diseases this person may be more prone to develop, but it also can show us which drugs will be the best fit for this person. Take, for example, someone with HIV. Before prescribing the first-line drug, doctors will run a test for a certain mutation that can make the person more prone to a bad reaction with this medication. With this information, the doctors will be able to give that person a drug that does not cause them to feel sick. Because if a medication makes someone feel sick, they're not gonna wanna take it. I certainly wouldn't. Which is why this has been such a big impact in, our, in the health field. Another application of pharmacogenomics is its ability to be utilized when a doctor has run into a dead end. They've tried just about every option out there, but the person is still not responding to treatment. Unfortunately, some people just have many mutations that make treatment difficult. I have seen this a lot with mental illness particularly with antidepressants. There are a gazillion different antidepressants out there, and each person responds to each drug in a different way. What works for one person may actually cause worsening of symptoms or side effects in another. The tricky thing with antidepressants, though, is that in order to know if it was a success or a failure, we must give it ample time to work, which can take anywhere from six to 12 months. Now, we do have treatment guidelines that help us determine what drug we are going to try next, but if we choose the wrong drug, we are exposing this person up to three months of disease progression, which can lead to self-harm, harm to others, and overall negative effects. And that is only if we choose the wrong drug once. Unfortunately, a lot of times with antidepressants, there are many trial and error processes, which means we are not only exposing this patient to months of disease progression, we are potentially exposing them of years of it. Just because someone looks like the perfect candidate on paper for a certain medication does not mean they are. 
Factors that we cannot see hide within our DNA, and pharmacogenomics brings light to these factors, paving the way to selecting the right medication the first time. One of the most amazing opportunities pharmacogenomics provides us with is its ability to be utilized even before a medication is needed. There is a strong genetic link in breast cancer, which is why many people who have positive family history of it have the opportunity to get tested for these DNA markers. This testing is an example of pharmacogenomics, and we have already seen the impact it has. If someone tests positive for these markers and they have that positive family history, they are empowered with this knowledge and can choose to take preemptive measures or not. Knowledge is power. Pharmacogenomics gives us this power, and with it, the possibilities are endless. Now, I wish I was able to give you patient-specific cases of the impact I've seen pharmacogenomics make, but unfortunately, HIPAA laws kind of have my hands tied there. I can, however, share with you a case of someone who is very close to me, of someone who inspired me to make the world better each and every day. A few years ago, my uncle was diagnosed with glioblastoma, which is a very aggressive form of brain cancer. He was originally given six months to live, and it wasn't going to be a pretty six months. Glioblastoma has the potential to completely alter a patient's personality, to make them feel trapped within their own bodies, to take them away from their loved ones. So we had all prepared for the worst. Thankfully, his doctors decided to use pharmacogenomics because he ended up being one of the very few people who had a certain mutation that made treating this already very difficult disease even harder to treat. With this information, though, his doctors were able to select the right treatment regimen for him from the very beginning, making him a 1% patient, meaning he lived longer than 99% of the patients with glioblastoma normally did. Plus, it gave me more time with my uncle. Although he is no longer with us, he was able to live five years past his original diagnosis thanks to his doctors using pharmacogenomics. So far today, we have talked about the advantages of pharmacogenomics over traditional medicine. We have taken a little look into my past to see how it shaped my passion for the advancement of personalized medicine. And although we only scratched the surface with the specific applications of it, we still have not discussed one very important factor. What made me get into the field in the first place? The answer is quite simple, really. It is the pull of that question left unanswered. Every healthcare professional has a story of why they chose the life of helping others. For some, they had a family member that was sick. For others, they were the ones that were sick. For me, it is the possibilities of the unknown. My identical twin and I were adopted when we were just a few months old, which is why I've always been fascinated with the idea of my ancestry and the possibility of our genetics simply because I do not know my own. Now, I chose the medical field because ever since I was a little kid, granted, I wasn't much smaller back then, I knew I wanted to grow up and work in a profession where I would be able to help others. But not having my full family history left me with the need to find answers, which is why a key turning point in my life was when I was first introduced to the concept of genes and DNA. I found it so fascinating that although I have a doppelganger out there with my face, my identical twin does not have the same genetic makeup as myself. Yes, our DNA matches more than two average Joes off the street, or even more than siblings, but it is not a 100% match. This novel concept helped to fuel my passion for finding ways to create medical treatments that were just as individualized as the person they were treating. This is why I chose pharmacogenomics. There is so much power, so much mystery, so much fear, yet so much hope in the unknown, and I believe pharmacogenomics is the key to unlocking the medical potential hidden within our genes. Now, inspiration comes from many sources. The mystery of my genetics and the unanswered riddles that come with being adopted inspire me to unlock the secrets hidden within our DNA. Growing up as an identical twin inspires me to create medical treatments personalized for every single person. My uncle's story inspires me to advance this field of personalized medicine because I have seen the impact it can make. Just because it is easier to use a preset list of factors to treat a disease does not mean it should be done that way. Just because someone looks like the perfect candidate on paper for a certain medication does not mean they are. 
Our genetic makeup holds more secrets, more clues, more potential than any list of questions we can check off at a doctor's office. It is time the medical field steps away from relying solely on these stereotypical markers and instead step into an age where we truly look at the individual being treated. No two people are alike. Let's start embracing the importance of individualization. Thank you.